Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, you guys are pretty, you know, sad that you haven't seen me for a long time and haven't seen my videos for a long time. And before I get on with the video, I just want to quickly apologize to you guys about, you know, my lack of, you know, being active and, you know, posting my videos. Um, it's just been, this year has been very crazy for me. You know, I've been very busy. A lot of, you know, turn of events happened for me that, you know, I don't want to be too, you know, descriptive of it, but just a lot of things have been going on with me ever since. And, you know, with work and plus some of you probably know that starting another YouTube channel that I've been doing for a little over a year and it's getting a lot better and I'm getting more subscribers. I'm, I'm doing a lot better and it's improving so much. Like every video I post, it's improving so much. So it's even hard to like try to post a lot of videos for the channel when I haven't posted a lot in this channel. You know, just to make you guys feel better, I decided to do a movie review for DreamWorks The Bad Guys, and I thought this time you might enjoy it, even though it's not a AMV or it's not a, you know, a mashup of animation movies and a song and all of that stuff. Um, but I will, I will tell you that um, I am working on one video. It's just been very hard to work on it while I have other things on my mind. And also, like, I can't really focus on a video when I don't have the mind or creativity of, like, what clip to put or what effects to put or captions so that part is really hard for me and that's the thing that sucks that if I don't have that then it's hard for me to focus on the video and to get it done as soon as possible I'm trying so hard to get a video done and once I do I post it immediately um, I'm really busy at the time but I know by next month I'm gonna be free most of the time so when that happens I'll be able to post hopefully be able to post a video for you guys so I apologize please don't give up on me please don't give up the channel keep continuing to watch my videos and I promise I'm gonna try to post one as soon as I can beside of all of that um so for today's video is I'm gonna do a movie review on DreamWorks newest movie The Bad Guys which was that came out in theaters on April 22nd and, you know, this movie was very, very interesting. And, you know, I have so much to say about this movie. And, you know, I spend a lot of time, you know, making notes and trying to add stuff that I want to say or what I want to focus on. So you pretty much know the routine. What was it like when I saw it for the first time? And, you know, my likes and dislikes and what do, what do I expect from the movie or what I wish was in the movie? And... You know, what are my thoughts if there was a sequel or something that's going to maybe happen in the future for this movie? And, you know, my my rating of like, you know, Rotten Tomato, scale 1 out of 10, scale 1 out of 5 stars, and do I recommend this movie to you guys? So you pretty much know the routine of the movie review. But anyway, enough said, I'm going to get on with the movie review. The experience on watching this film it was really quick. You know, this movie was really like a fast paced movie. And I was kind of sad because I was like, that's it? Like, that's all? I want to see more of these characters. I want to see more of this. And because it was just really cool. You know, I decided to, you know, I wanted to see it again. So a couple days later, when I had the time, I went to see it the second time. And I liked it a lot better. Because usually that's with me. If I see a movie a second or third time I like it a lot better because if I know what's gonna happen sometimes I pick the pieces and kind of understand situations that I didn't get from the first one so but yeah when I saw it the second time I liked it a lot better and I had a better understanding on you know with the story with the characters and also like catching some things that I didn't get from the first movie or that I didn't really understand when I saw it for the first time. So that was also kind of like giving me an idea of like why, you know, why it was unclear or why I didn't get it or like why, 
you get to know a little bit of it, but not all of it. If you know what I mean, if you don't, I'm going to quickly explain it later on. But but yeah, so far, that's my experience with the movie. And now I'm going to start talking about my likes about this movie. So the first one is that the animation. You know, I was so impressed with this this animation, you know, and I, I briefly explained about it when I did a trailer reaction on the movie that this was a lot of 2D, but it had like little hint of 3D. Like it wasn't very, you know, when you think of 3D animation, like the texture of the clothes that the character wears or their hair or, you know, mostly just texture it's all it's very specific like you see like with like hair you see every line of hair on a character or you can tell by the texture of their clothing that they're wearing or the environment or something and with this one it was a little bit 2d so it wasn't like all very specific like you can see everything it's just a lot more 2d ish i thought with the facial expressions of the characters were very authentic and especially the physicality of the characters and i noticed with like the physicality of the characters it, there was a little bit of cartoony physicality and you know like i always call it like a looney tunes action or a tom and jerry action you know just the classic like you know you know, just like when they fall or when they try to run, you know, it's just all of those kind of like cartoony action. So there was a little bit of that with some characters, which I thought was kind of fun to watch. I will say with the animation, not only it was a lot of a 2D animation, but I kind of looked at it a little bit as a comic concept and you know like a perfect example you know like spider-man into the spider-verse you know it's so much like a comic book you know just the animation and how you know they add like you know you know text bubbles you know if a per what the character is thinking you see it on like the cloud or something or even like you know sound effects you know if they hear a bang then there'll be like a word that says bang pop up or something or you know just something like that so they kind of had some things like that in this movie. I really like the setting of the movie. So I really like the fact that the city that they're living in, they don't really have a name of the city, but this is so like Los Angeles. They made this city so much like Los Angeles, which is kind of funny because it's pretty much relevant because that's basically Los Angeles, you know, that there's a lot of, I mean, I'm sorry to people who love Los Angeles or love California. I mean, I, I was born in LA and I do like Los Angeles, but, but no, there's like a lot of like situations that happen in LA with car chases and, you know, bad guys and crimes and police officers, the LAPD and all. So it's kind of funny that they add those kind of things in this particular movie because it's about the bad guys and, you know, there's police officers involved and this city looks so much like LA. So I thought that was actually very kind of creative that they did that. The second one is the characters. Um, so right away, you know, the bad guys. I absolutely love the bad guys. Um, I like the fact that they each have a very unique personality and they have different skills that they use when they're on a heist or when they try to steal something or just anything. If they're doing a bad thing, they each have their own skill to complete the mission or something. You know, like, well, like Mr. Wolf, not only he's the leader of the pack or he plans the idea of like this is what's going to happen this is what you're going to do this is what you're going to do and this is what i'm going to do and blah 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 not only that but he uses his charm he uses a lot of his charm to like get where he wants to go and i just think that's kind of funny I'm like of course he's going to use his charm like come on he's a he's a nick wilde kind of guy of course he's going to use his charisma and his sarcasm and his slyness and all of that so and then you have Mr. Snake who, you know, he mostly did a lot of like cracking the codes on locks or safes and, you know, trying to get through, you know, locks mostly, just all of that stuff. And then you have Mr. Shark who does a lot of dress up and disguises. You know, there's a scene of like when they're on a heist to steal that like 
golden dolphin thing. Of course, Mr. Shark dresses up like a woman. So I'm like, of course, he's going to put on a dress. So it was kind of funny with that. Um, Miss Tarantula, which I absolutely love Aquafina, And she was mostly like a tech technology geek you know she hacks in the system and she does a lot of the technical work and trying to you know hack into the systems and trying to prevent you know the other bad guys to get caught or to get noticed by surveillance footage or you know anything that will prevent them to get caught or something and then mr piranha he's mostly just he just scares people like <laughs> that's the thing he just jumps up and just goes what's up <laughs> and he just scares you so he was actually pretty funny as well and again <laughs> with out of all the bad guys i love the one that i really like the most is mr wolf <laughs> so <laughs> he just i don't know he's just one of those characters that when you look at them for the first time you're just like damn <laughs> so that was me i mean i mean when i first saw the trailer i wasn't really thinking about it but then when people were just talking about him and then when the second trailer came out and i saw the second trailer i was like oh shit <laughs> i was like whoa okay so i don't know it was just like just his you know his attractive personality and you know like the fact that he kind of resembles nick wilde which i absolutely love nick wilde like i seriously love that guy you know it's just the fact of like his attractiveness you know his personality he just has so much charisma sarcasm and just being so mischievous and you just go crazy about him like seriously like i did like ask some of my co-workers saying let me ask you this wolf character from the bad guys do you think he's attractive and they all just look at me like really <laughs> i was like laughing some girls were like so mr wolf huh and i was like i was just i was like that kind of girl that's like seeing you know my crush and i just get all like blushed up and go like oh my god but but no it's just, it's funny how people even like know know that i have a thing with mr wolf and they're just like oh so you're furry and it's like no don't you freaking say that that is not true how am i a furry if this is a cartoon character like this is not a real character like he's not real he's just an animation character but i don't know but yeah it's just kind of hysterical what i am with you know just with mr wolf it's just kind of crazy to me but besides of you know liking mr wolf there's another character that i absolutely love and it's the the fox woman um diane foxington and i have to say like it's it's really shocking to me like she despite of like mr wolf being the most attractive male animated character i probably find her one of the most attractive animated female characters i have ever seen like honestly like these two characters are probably the most attractive characters i've ever seen in an animation movie and not just an animation movie but as animal characters like that's just very crazy for me to even you know say that and but you know like she she has such a very intelligent personality and that she has her own kind of charm and you know besides being not just the governor of the city but spoiler alert she's also a criminal well known as the crimson paw and when she's the crimson paw oh my god she is a badass like oh my god when she i enjoy seeing her in action when she's fighting and when she's using her gadgets and weapons i really like this you know female character she is awesome i absolutely like her in spite of with mr wolf i like her as well i think she's an awesome character the third one was the action um you know i was very impressed with the action you know i mean when you think about action in an animation movie you're kind of thinking it's very childish pretty friendly nothing too exciting or that blows you away it's more kind of a child level action it's not very serious action or it's not as violent or not as 
you know, things that just make you go, oh, or ow, mm, but, but no, this one, this kind of action in this particular animation movie absolutely blow me away. You know, there was a lot of, like, um, combinations of, like, Fast and Furious because there were some car chases. Um, there was, like, Ocean's 8 because there were, like, some heists. And, you know, there was a lot of, like, um, mission, a little bit of Mission Impossible because there were some, like, gadgets and weapons and, like, trying to be all spy and sneaky. And... But yeah, just the sounds were amazing, you know, and the background songs that they use for a certain, like, action scene was very entertaining, very thrilling, and, and you know, I love, like, there was a lot of, you know, like I said, there was car chases, there were heists, there was a jail breakout, there was the battle between the bad guys and Professor Marmalade. The action in this movie was kind of like the big climax of this whole film. Because basically, when it's about the bad guys and it's about doing crime, you have to have really good action. And I'm really glad that they did it and that it was really good action. Like, it wasn't a very child-level, kitty kind of action. It was like really good action. And then the last one was um, the closure of the film, mostly the ending of the film. Um, I like how, you know, with the character development of the bad guys, it didn't really change. And you know what I mean? Like, it, this wasn't a case of like, they're bad guys, and then they're now turn into good guys and now they're heroes and they're a whole different character they're not who they are as they were at the beginning and I like how the fact that was this was kind of more like they were criminals and now they're becoming vigilantes and so they're still bad guys but now they're they're in a good way they're the bad guys so they're not robbing banks or stealing or doing bad things to good people they're still bad guys, but in a good way. Because it's like, come on, we, we like the bad guys. We don't want them to change. And that was with me. I didn't want them to change a lot. And, you know, and like I said, I love the twist of like, they're now vigilantes and, you know, they're not really bad guys. And plus, since like Diane is now part of the group and also, the kitty is part of the group. I thought that was really sweet that now the little kitty cat that Mr. Wolf saved, which I'll explain a little bit about that scene later, that he saved from the tree. I thought that was adorable. But yeah, I just, I really liked the ending of the film was like, they turn themselves in and accept like the punishment of like, you know, going to prison and, you know, you know, spend time with the things that they stole throughout the years and everything that they did, all the bad things they did, but then they were only in jail for one year because they were good, so they got released early. But they're still the bad guys, but they're just vigilantes. So I really like that kind of twist of that's how it's gonna end. So, but that was really kind of a good ending. So for like scenes I really like, um, well the first one was um, the car chasing, which was at the beginning of the film and I thought it was a great hookup to, to put in the movie as like, you know, it all starts with a car chase and then it gets you like into the movie more. And it mostly starts like Mr. Wolf and Mr. Snake are like in this cafe and they're talking and they're like, okay, let's go rob a bank. And then they go rob a bank and then they drove away and then the rest of the game comes along and then they're getting chased by some police officers. And you know, you hear the sound of the car chase, which I thought was really, really good. You know, just the tire screeching, the sound of the engine of the car and just the driving and all the like turns and, all of that, I thought it was really, really well done. And you know, it felt a lot like a Fast and Furious kind of action. So I really, really liked that. I thought it was also kind of smart how Mr. Wolf was kind of talking to the audience. You know, like he says, hey, you get over here, a little closer. Oh, okay, because you're afraid of me. And then, you know, he introduces each character and, you know, and, and you know, kind of just explaining to us like, what is the character, what's their purpose as a bad guy, and, you know, saying, oh, we might be bad, but we're good at it, and 
hey, that's the deal. So I really kind of like that they add, you know, that he's talking to the audience. I thought it was kind of a really cool thing to do. And this, this scene that I talked a little bit about earlier that I just thought it was so adorable. And it was when Mr. Wolf saves the cat from the tree. It was such a sweet moment and it was so cute to see him saving the cat, especially like this is of the big bad wolf saving a little kitty. You know, that just warms your heart. I kind of like how he talks to the kitty, kind of like he first introduced himself saying, I think we got off the bad start. The name's Wolf. And then the cat kind of like meows, like kind of scared. And then he's like, yeah, that's the first impression I get, but hey, just give me a chance. And then I kind of like how he kind of like tells the cat like, oh, I want to share a secret with you. Don't tell anyone. But I love when someone went the scratch behind the ear and I was just like, and then he was going to do it the same with the cat. I will say that they, they did something really smart that I didn't think about when I saw it the first time, but I thought it was really smart that he first catches the cat because the cat was trying to get away with the from him and then he jumps on a certain leaf or something but then it breaks so then the cat falls but then Mr. Wolf caught it and then he puts it back on the tree so at first when I saw him I'm like wait why did you put it back on the tree like you just caught it you can go down but but I thought it was smart that instead of him you know catching it and then coming down saying, oh, I caught the cat, but then the cat is still afraid of him. I thought it was smart that he put the cat back on the tree as a sign of like, you know, kind of like a sign of a trust saying, see, I'm not gonna hurt you. I saved you, I put you back on the tree. And also kind of like letting the cat decide to come down when he wants to or when he feels like he can trust Mr. Wolf. Kind of showing like, you know, he's harmless and that, you know, he's not the big bad wolf and that he really wants to save the cat. So I thought it was really smart that they add that. So I thought it was a really kind of a good way to like show Mr. Wolf like he's doing the right thing of not just trying to save the cat, but kind of showing, you know, trust to show the cat that to trust him because he just saved it and put it back on the tree kind of showing see i'm harmless see now you can trust me so i thought that was really smart that they add that but i also love the scene of like when he's um petting the kitty the kitty's like playing with mr wolf's fingers kind of like you know you kind of see him like grabbing it with his fingers i love how mr wolf brings the kitty with him in bed i thought that was adorable that he brings the cat i just thought it was so adorable plus of course you know when the game was going to defeat marmalade you know they were on our way they were on their way to defeat marmalade but then they're like wait mr wolf was like wait a minute and he decides to bring the cat with them so he stops by the tree and then he shouts here kitty 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 and the kitty jumps and then I love the part when he puts sunglasses on the kitty. I thought that was so cool. I just loved it. This like whole like little relationship he has with this little kitty. I just thought it was so adorable. And just, you know, a little, rela just a little relationship with like a big bad wolf with a little eeny beeny kitty. I just thought that was adorable. And now like at the end of the movie, I think the cat is now part of the group because, you know, at the end they ride along to the sunset and the cat was was there with them. So I think it was kind of cute. Now the cat's kind of part of the group. Another scene that I really like was the gala scene. And, you know, it was like a charity event that they had, you know, with this meteorite heart thing and with the golden dolphin. And then, you know, the bad guys were planning a heist to steal the golden dolphin. And, you know, the case of like pretending to be, you know, the good guys, but they're gonna, you know, betray them by, you know, stealing the golden dolphin and then running away with it. So that was basically the plan. But there was like a thing that happened that didn't, um, wasn't according to plan. And Mr. Piranha decides to sing a song to like distract the situation. And the song that he was singing that I absolutely love, I thought it was really, really good. It was called like, you know, we're going to be good tonight, you know, good tonight it was it was such a good song and it, it had like a little jazz you know type of song and i really really like that and of course not the fact of the song in general but the fact of i just the dance 
between Mr. Wolf and Diane. I absolutely love that scene. It's just, you know, it was so fun to watch. I recently just found out about this, which is pretty much a fun fact about this scene, is that the director hired a dance choreographer to choreograph the dance scene. And they, they wanted to choreograph it based on the actor's dance moves. You know, they mentioned how Sam Rockwell, who is the voice of Mr. Wolf, he uses a lot of like groove and a lot of twists and turns and kind of crisscross with his legs and arms. And how like with Zazie Beetz dances a lot with sassiness and hips. They said how the director actually wanted Sam Rockwell and Zazie Beetz to dance together for the choreographer to have a visual of like their dance moves and to collaborate the dancing to make the dancing. But they said unfortunately that didn't happen because both actors were busy on other things, probably on other films that they were working on and they had different scheduled and one of them was like the other side of the world and this other was somewhere else so they didn't really had the time to meet up and do the dancing so that was really disappointing when I heard about that because I thought that would be so fun to see these two actors who are the voice of these characters to dance and then you would see a side by side of the actors and the characters that they're playing and doing the same dance move. So I thought that would have been really fun to watch, but unfortunately that didn't happen. But I also love the little chemistry during the dancing that Mr. Wolf and Diane had that I thought was so sweet and very flirtatious, I would say. And, you know, I just really like it. I thought it was a really kind of a sweet moment that they had together at the dancing. And then another thing that I liked that had to involve with Mr. Wolf and Diane was when they're in the car and Mr. Wolf, like, you know, the bad guys got out of prison with some help with Diane and the other bad guys decided to like leave because they had, they want no part with like, you know, defeating Professor Marmalade and they felt betrayed by Mr. Wolf and all that. So Diane and Mr. Wolf are in the car and Diane's trying to talk some sense into Mr. Wolf, kind of giving him some comfort and kind of encouraging him that he's doing the right thing. You know, I like how she brings up how, you know, she knows how it feels to lose everything and how she was able to change herself to a better person, you know, and how he can do the same thing as well. But despite of like the car scene, I also love right after that scene that Diane kind of shows Mr. Wolf her secret room, like her secret little storage of, you know, when she was Crimson Paw of like having all these weapons and gadgets. And I kind of like how Mr. Wolf is like testing all the weapons and gadgets and just being so impressed. And kind of like how she's so like kind of all like you know excited as well saying oh my god I miss this this is so fun and this has been such a long time and I miss this and how he's just testing all the weapons and gadgets and also how they're getting ready for their mission and like he recently finds out that she stole his car and then he says respect so I kind of like how they also get ready for the mission they're putting on like their suits they are having their gadgets and weapons and they just drive with the car and they just go off for the mission so I thought that was really really cool to watch and speaking of you know Crimson Paw and Diane Foxington um I love seeing this side of Diane Foxington that as a criminal. I like the jail scene where she helps the bad guys escape from prison. I loved seeing her in action and showing off her fighting skills, her flexibility. And it was just so entertaining to watch. And I kind of like how she's a little bit more intelligent than the other guys. And of course, I absolutely love the motorcycle scene. You know, it was like watching Mission Impossible of like her riding the motorcycle and doing some tricks and going super fast and putting like this magnet devices on the trucks. And plus there was like a slow motion of her like diving under a truck to put the magnet on. I thought that was a really cool shot. I don't know the name of the song, but like the choice of the song that they use as the background for this scene was awesome. And when you see it in theaters, you can feel like 
you feel the rhythm, you feel the beats of the song and the sound effects of the motorcycle kind of makes you feel like you're riding the motorcycle with her. And like the fact that she took webs with her and kind of said, you want to go on a girl's trip? I thought that was a really sweet thing to add. But yeah, that's all. Like I have to say, I think Diane is such a badass and I really, really love seeing that side of her in this movie. And then the last thing I really like was the plot twist of the movie. Um, but I will say like most of the plot twists were pretty much predictable. Like, well, like the main was was Professor Marmalade was the actual villain of the movie, which I kind of had a feeling because, you know, like the gala scene when the meteorite is stolen and the bad guys were being blamed for it and then they get arrested. And then all of a sudden Marmalade just shows up. It's like, wait, where was he when all this happened? So that kind of gave me the feeling of like, okay, it's him. But I will say like the one plot twist that I actually was not thinking of that I really didn't didn't realize was that he was the old lady that you know the same with Mr. Wolf when he it's during the heist when he saves an old lady and the old lady like says thank you dear and then gives him a little pat on the hand saying you're such a good boy and when they revealed that I was like oh my god he he was the old lady oh my god so that was like one little plot twist that i actually didn't expect to happen the one plot twist that i was actually kind of surprised was how mr snake um planned to scam marmalade by pretending to work with him by stealing the meteorite and betraying mr wolf and the gang at the end it turned out that mr snake was actually helping his friends by switching the meteorite and that i remember like there was a scene of like um at professor marmalade's like place he had a meteorite but it was like a lamp so it this was a case of like mr snake switched the lamp meteorite to the real one and how he used the helmet to control the guinea pigs to switch the meteorite and how we thought through all this time that mr snake was now the bad guy that he was he betrayed Mr. Wolf by wanting to be the villain and instead of doing the right thing or, you know, right after he did a good deed to Mr. Shark by giving him a push pop and then he was like denying that he did something good and he's like, no, 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 I'm always going to be the bad guy and then it ended there so we thought he betrayed Mr. Wolf and he's the villain but that wasn't the case. But I thought it was very well done how they put it together and how they showed some flashbacks and kind of showing it how it all went, how did it start. And there were even some things that we didn't see until now. Um, and even like with me, there were some things that I caught, you know, realizing, oh, so that's when this happened or that's when he did this. And Sides with like watching the first time that I didn't see it by watching it the second time I could see now like the parts that they mentioned at the end and you know seeing his facial expressions realizing that he was pretending and like one that I really caught was like there was a scene of when he sees Mr. Wolf in the game you know having a hard time you know they were in trouble and it was not looking good and he was trying to convince marmalade to take it easy saying come on take it easy don't be all that harsh on them and you could see his face of like the face of being nervous because it wasn't according to plan so i kind of like how they add that being like oh so he knew something was up he knew that this was not going well so he had to do something to change marmalade's mind but but no, I thought it was really smart how they add that and how they explained it by bringing up flashbacks and saying, oh, when he did this, this actually happened. Or when he did this, then this happened. So I thought it was really kind of smart how they all put it together for me to have audience understand what's the twist. So since I said a lot about my likes on the movie, I'm now going to talk a little bit about my dislikes with the movie. My first dislike was that this was a fast-paced film. You know, my experience of watching it, you know, at first I was like, okay, that was a good movie and, you know, I really liked it and I enjoyed it. And then moments later when I got home, I started realizing, wow, that was a really short movie. Like, the story was rushed and it all happened in a short period of time. You know, it was a quick plot, 
pretty much predictable and like the you know what was going to happen and the plot twist was pretty much you know predictable as well and it was very simplistic you know you really didn't expect a lot to happen i also thought like some scenes that were either very important or have an emotional impact on the story or character they were too short and wasn't long enough for us as audience to like get to know the character's development or the story's development or try to feel the scene or something try to connect with the scene somehow you know mostly with me i understand like animation movies these days are like 90 100 minutes and i just wish they were longer because i think longer movies the more development there is and you get to know more about the characters or the story and you it just feels more like a lot of things are happening rather than just things happen in a short period of time and then it's like okay that's it end of the movie it's like so that was kind of my big thing. It was like, I wish it was longer than what it is. My second dislike is there was not enough development. So the first like one that didn't have a lot of development, I believe was the storytelling. So, you know, I wish there was more development on the bad guys learning how to be good and trying to do a good deed. Because some people mentioned that I wasn't, I didn't really think of was that some of the good deeds that they were doing we already saw it in the trailer so there wasn't any new ones that we didn't see in the trailer they only did one heist and by saving the guinea pigs but they failed but they didn't do another heist to like you know to succeed or you know get better and you know but right after that that's when mr wolf saved the cat from the tree and now everybody loves them and it's just like wait why would they all love everybody, but Mr. Wolf was the only one that did the good deed? So that was like the thing that was kind of confusing for me. But but no, I felt like they should have done another heist and that this time they accomplished it. And then that's when the people of the city starts to like them and, you know, starts to look at them as good guys. So I wish there was more good deeds going on than what they show was really not enough. I also kind of felt like there should have been more emotional connections with not just the whole story, but like the character story and their perspectives of what's going on with them and what they're going through, you know, on a situation or with a character or something. And speaking of, you know, character development, that's another dislike of lack of development that I thought were the characters. You know, there were some characters that I wish had more development and for us as audience that we get to know them more. You know, first one is Mr. Wolf. You know, I wish we kind of see more of him realizing the true meaning of being good and the feeling of like being good is not just doing a good deed, but also like the feeling of that you care and your love for others and especially for his friends. And, you know, I wish, I wish he had a backstory of like him dealing with the situation, which they mentioned a couple times in the movie of the scary stereotype. The second character is Mr. Snake. So like, I kind of want to know what, like, what's his friendship with Mr. Wolf, even though we kind of know a little bit about their friendship, like it kind of looks like that their friendship is like the strongest compared to their friendship with the other bad guys. Um, but also like, I want to see like how, how did he became a criminal and how they met the other bad guys and how they became the group of criminals. Like how did that all start from like first time they meet and to getting to know each other and then start realizing they like to commit crimes and they create a pack of being bad guys or something. Also like what's his backstory of being a scary stereotype? Cause he does mention a little bit about it of like why he doesn't like birthday parties and saying like no one would come to a birthday party to celebrate a monster like me or something. You know, he mentions something like that. So I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to know more about that. Like, what was it like for that for him? Not just for the birthday party, but like for something else. Even though I like Diane's character development, I still, you know, my thing was like, I wish she was in the movie more often because she technically really wasn't. I mean, I wish she was witnessing the experiments with Professor Marmalade, you know, watching the bad guys trying to do good deeds and, you know, kind of like, you know, 
investigating or something or just like watching them you know she really didn't have any you know faith I guess but but like I also wanted to see more interactions with Mr. Wolf and maybe like she opens to him a little bit more about her personal issues of you know being the governor or dealing with the scary stereotype because she does mention something about being a you know known as a tricky fox there were some circumstances that were left unanswered that i did kind of like mention like they say a little bit but not a whole lot or they do mention but just nothing specific so like with me it was like i wanted to learn a little bit more about this meteorite like, what was the situation of the meteorite crashing to the city? Luckily, it didn't destroy the whole city. It just made a big, like, gap or something. Like, how did that all happen? And what were the circumstances that lead to that? So it was just, I thought with the meteorite, I'm like, okay, what's with that? Like, how did that all start it? Or how did that even came about or something? This might be a stupid thing, but it's like, why is Marmalade a professor? Like, what is his position as a professor? Or like, what was his purpose in the movie? Like, what was, like, really, I didn't kind of understand his purpose as just a professor, but also like, in the movie, it's just like, what, what was his purpose? Why was he a professor for what? Like, what professor, you know, of what? So that's, I don't know. I don't know if anybody was thinking about that, but I, that was me. I was like, okay, why is he called professor? of what what is the cause of being a professor so another one that i don't know if a lot of people thought about but when diane went to the bad guys like secret storage with all the things that they stole and there's a scene um during the gala when mr wolf told her to you know he gave her you know a map or something of like showing where their place is and saying i'm giving it all back take it all give it back she's in the elevator and then she goes to like their secret like storage room with all the things that they stole throughout the years of committing crime and you know it ends it there and then it goes on to a different scene and then a part of me is thinking does she really take it and give it back like does she really do that like if so how does she do it by herself or does she get some help from some other people. I just find it a little suspicious that, you know, she sees everything that they've stolen throughout the years, and the next thing, when the bad guys return, everything is gone. So I'm thinking like, th there's something fishy about it. Like how come we see her, see a scene of like her seeing everything, but then we don't see how does she take it or give it all back? There's one that I kind of like, you know, even though it's left unanswered. I'm kind of having a feeling I understand why they really have been, you know, it didn't really explain a lot or it didn't like stretch to like be more descriptive or something. But it was the car scene with Mr. Wolf and Diane when Mr. Wolf was sad that he lost his friends and, you know, his friends felt betrayed by him. And, you know, like he doesn't know what to do without them. And Diane responds saying, like, I know how it feels to lose everything. You know, when she said that, I was like thinking, wait, does that mean she was in a group as well and lost them? And, you know, actually, I, I'll admit, I kind of cheated a little bit by, you know, I know in the books there's another group of criminals that they work with. And not only that they work with, but... It, I believe they know Diane very well. Like Diane was part of that group as well. And then she lost them by, you know, wanting to change herself and wanting to become a better person and not wanting to be the Crimson Paw anymore. I don't know. I, I feel like that's a pretty good prediction or something. I don't know. This one thing that I absolutely don't understand is why the only animal characters besides Diane and Marmalade, why do they live in a human society? Like, you know, I'm curious of like, what was, why was that? Why was that a case of like, you know, they are like the only animal characters and everybody else is human? You know, you know, sometimes I'm like, why did the author did that? Or why did he choose to like, you know, have the bad guys that they're the animals, Diane, who's a fox, is the 
uh, governor and marmalade the guinea pig is a professor those are the only only animal characters that we see throughout the film and the rest are humans how come we don't see more animal characters living in the city and you just have the bad guys diane and professor marmalade that's pretty much it so it's like so how are they the the only animal characters but everybody else is humans like how is that possible like i just that just does not make sense for me so i thought that part was a little bit kind of you know confusing to me so now you heard my likes and dislikes about the movie i want to speak a little bit about what to expect for this new dreamworks franchise because they they mentioned so many times like this is going to be dreamworks new franchise and that there's going to be a sequel which you know they said that the director has been talking a lot about the sequel and you know since this is a book series which i actually did not know the first time this one is a lot more character development so with mostly on mr wolf you know him becoming a vigilante and how much his life has changed from being a criminal to becoming like a good guy vigilante person you know what's his friendship with each of the bad guys and most likely on mr snake and also kind of like what's his situation with diane you know is there some romance in the air is this just a situation of a friendship so i feel like it might be kind of funny if like he's having a hard time trying to keep you know the team together but it's probably affecting his friendships with the guys because he's trying to figure out what's his relationship with Diane or maybe focusing a lot with Diane or something so I don't know maybe that would be funny if like he's trying to figure out what how does he feel with his relationship with Diane or something hopefully it's romance I don't know hopefully it's romantic please please be romantic and plus like you know the other bad guys of course you know how they are becoming vigilantes as well and learning more about being good and becoming better bad guys and what's their friendship development with each other including with diane and i'm also kind of thinking like maybe mr snake is probably struggling the most about being good because maybe he still likes being bad but he's still having a hard time controlling himself by doing a good thing when deep down he really wants to do something bad so i think out of all the bad guys he's probably the one that's having a hard time trying to do a good thing and you know with diane foxington you know how she's now part of the bad guys group and working with them and probably getting to know more about them individually and you know what's her relationship status with mr wolf and maybe she's also having a hard time being like the governor and crimson paul at the same time without you know without the people knowing that she's the crimson paul because in the movie they thought professor marmalade was the crimson paul so i think also that's like another thing like she's trying to like keep it together but she's having a hard time because she doesn't want the world she doesn't want her true identity to be spilled for the world to know she's the real crimson paul that she's not all what they think she is another one is more story development so i want like another action heist adventure maybe like they probably are like trying to stop another well-known criminal by catching them and trying to get evidence or clues to help them out and fighting other bad guys other villains and i don't know maybe they might team up with another group of criminals and this possibly might be diane's former group you know be cool if it was like a group of female criminals you know this was like a case of like oceans 11 which is with sandra bullock and um cape lachette and you know what am i trying to think all the other there was a female version of oceans 8 but i think it would be kind of funny if they add a little bit of like that kind of group into this into the sequel but maybe like there might be a wedge between diane and the group because maybe there's been you know situations or personal issues that happen throughout the time and how maybe both groups are trying to work together and the bad guys teach the other group about the value of being good deed or something so maybe that might happen 
I don't know. That might be a very interesting thing that might happen in the sequel. Another one is like a lot more action. Well, like we need a lot more action. We need more like Ocean's Eleven, maybe Mission Impossible, more car chases, more fighting, more defeating like the villains, undercover heist, and just action, 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 action. You know, more gadgets, more weapons, cars, spy gear, outfits, disguises. And last but not least, we, I hope we see more development on relationships and friendships. You know, Mr. Wolf with the bad guys, you know, how are they dealing with, you know, being good vigilantes and not doing any more crimes? And how is that, you know, if it's helping them or if it's, you know, if they're having a hard time trying to keep that lifestyle or something. And of course, Mr. Wolf and Diane Foxington, you know, where the relationship is going. Is this going to be romantic? Is it going to be platonic? And, you know, I kind of, I really hope it's romantic because, like, come on, their chemistry in that, in this movie was so captivating. It was so flirtatious. Like, come on, you could definitely tell there was something going on. And it was a shame that we didn't see enough. And it was a shame we didn't see a kissing. It was like, come on. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a good thing because maybe it might show in the sequel. Hopefully, hopefully cross my fingers. And then, you know, with Diane, with the bad guys, you know, getting to know each of them and working together with them and then learning about their friendships with each other and maybe how their friendship is with Mr. Wolf. So I think also like with her trying to be part of the group more and kind of learning more about each of them and kind of getting to know them more. And now I've said everything about my review and what I thought and what I like and didn't like about the film and my predictions for the sequel. Now I'm going to tell you about my rating on the movie. So scale one out of 10, I give it an eight. Zero out of five stars, I give it four out of five stars. And with like the Rotten Tomatoes, um, I know it's like 87%. So that's probably like a good number I would do. I probably would do like 87 or 88%. And last but not least, do I recommend this movie? Um, even though there were some disappointments I had. I still think it's a great movie with a lot of action. There's a lot of um, slapstick comedy and heartfelt moments. So yeah, I, I still recommend this movie. Um, I think families will enjoy it, including kids. And you know, I forgot to mention, I even, I've even saw some, like adults enjoying it and watching it by themselves. Like they didn't have kids around or something. It was just them. Besides, I believe this movie will get better when the sequel comes out because like, come on, of course there's going to be a sequel. Like they even, the director even talked about it when the movie came out in theaters. So I think, and you know, a lot of people don't believe this, but I personally think sequels, depends how the first movie was, that the sequel mostly is like 10 times better than the first one. So, but yeah, my hope for like this one, I hope the sequel is 10 times better than the first one. Even though how much I like the first one, even though I had some disappointments, I still hope for a sequel and that the sequel is a lot better than the first one. So yeah, that's my review on DreamWorks The Bad Guys. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, please subscribe my channel, leave comments below what you thought about the video, and if you agreed or disagree with anything that I said, or if you saw the bad guys, leave comments of what you thought about the movie. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I wish everyone a happy day, so see you later.